What is up, bros? With Josh here, and welcome to Chapter 4, Episode 3 of our Road to Tier 10 series. Our series, we're going over every line in World of Warships from the lowest tier all the way to the highest tier. See which line can do it the fastest, and see if we learn anything throughout the ships. We may be forgotten in the past, or if anything stands out to us. And one thing that stands out, obviously, we have the Zhao. So we finished this line, and just like the last line, the Russian Destroyers, we went down the Grozovoy line. This line surprised me with just how fast it got through to Tier 10. Um, I thought hey, this one might take a little while. One thing I did definitely notice throughout this entire line is just the effect cruisers have on games. Now, we ended up actually having a pretty solid win rate throughout this entire line into the 60s, some even into the 70s throughout the entire of the ship. Well, I guess obviously we had 100% some of the low tier ones, but they don't really count. But through the ones where actually it took us some games, we kept a pretty dang high win rate. Um... One of the main things, though, obviously this line throughout as we went from the Mogami, the Tier 8 for the high tiers, the Ibuki at Tier 9, and then the Zhao at Tier 10 is the play style of these ships. They were fantastic at kind of holding down the line, a really enjoyable and kind of trolly line to play, which I kind of reignited some fun I really had with this, and just how punishing a good IGN ship can be while using its stealth as well as its firepower and especially its torpedoes. But, again, this line got through a lot faster than I thought it would. Now, one caveat on the end of this. Now, just barely at the end of the Ibuki. As you can see, we are back into the main clan, as well as the premium time has been switched over. So, um, going forward in this series, instead of trying to, like, fandangle and waiting 15 days and then buying the non-premium uh, the non-World of Warships premium account. I think throughout this entire uh, rest of the series, just a little asterisk, and I'll let I'll keep a, a note of this throughout the entire of the series. Is we're I think we're just gonna stick with the World of Warships premium account. It's just easier. Uh, we keep getting rewarded that, and you can't switch back and forth between this. And then obviously staying in the clan to help the clan get more oil, and with the naval battles going on. So. Basically, everything will going forward and at just briefly at the end, I think it took us five or six games with those extra bonuses. So probably one more game it would have taken to get to the Zao. Um, we're going to stick with those extra bonuses throughout the rest of the series. So going forward, the lines will probably be a tad faster because we're going to get basically with the clan battle bonus and the premium uh, bonus, a 20% more XP. So it definitely will go a tad faster. Um, just want to let you guys know that throughout the series and continuing on with the series, Instead of restarting everything over, which I debated on doing, we'll just continue on and then finish up the rest of the lines. So I want to let you guys know, going forward, everything will have a 20% more XP bonus and uh, will probably seem to go a bit faster because uh, it's just easier for me. I'm having to not leave the clan, come back to the clan, blah, 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 do all that kind of stuff. So anyways, the tier eight, the Mogami, this thing was fantastic. And I think I'll do a whole video on this ship as well. Um, one of the biggest questions I get was 155s or 203s. Now, this is one of the few ships in this game. Well, actually, there's a, eh, there's a few of them. But the, uh, the Mogami at this tier has the options of having 155s. So what happens is you get more shells going out, a faster reload as well as a much slower turret traverse. So 10 second on the reload time, obviously much lower on the alpha damage, um, but you get more shells going out. And then the uh, the bigger calibers, slower reload, faster turrets, obviously more alpha damage. So the big question was 155s or 203s throughout this entire ship. And by a long shot, by a long shot, and remember when we first got this ship, we didn't even have inertia fuse which was a solid captain skill. If you guys don't know what Inertia Fuse is, we'll just click on this captain. He doesn't have it right now since we had to change it up. But Inertia Fuse increases the pen of calibers that are um, uh, armor penetration with calibers over 139% or, or 130. It basically gives you more uh, pen on lower caliber shells, basically up to about 180. That's when it falls off. Then there's some weird math for the 240s and the higher calibers as well for some break points, but if you have a smaller caliber, basically under 152 and under, you kind of want inertia fuse on everything. Um, and so even then, the 152s did more damage than the 203s. So I probably just slaughtered exactly what inertia fuse meant. So you guys know what I mean. But it gives smaller caliber guns more pen, basically. But 155s or 203s, I found the 203s were only better against, like, 
I don't even know. The broadside targets, maybe getting more citadels. Other than that, the 155s just absolutely smash the shit out of them. Um, stick with the 155s by far. I think I might do an entire video on this as well. You want that faster reload. You want that more. You basically you're gonna get more damage, more fires, more everything out of this. Um, and you definitely want to be running those. So 155s for sure. Uh, even when I was not, I didn't have a 14 point captain. We didn't even have a nurse fuse. 155s did way more damage still than the 203s. Now I know some people like the 203s. By all means, play them. That's cool with me. But 155s is something that I would recommend. Um, but for the playstyle of the Mogami, you're going to be really getting into that IGN form of the IGN play, which is dropping your torpedoes all the time, embracing that torp boat life that the IGN cruisers have, using both your guns, your stealth, and your torps. These torps, one thing I definitely noticed, 10 kilometer torps, 10.5 kilometer range without a captain. So you're way under that with the captain. Um, you can That means you can stealth torp is these things are beasts, monsters. They do a ton of damage, high flood chance. And what you can really do is using both on, since the IGN tend to be on the backside, what I call them ass torps. Basically you have these rear facing torp launchers. So what you want to do with these ships is get ships pushing into you. Um, not chasing towards ships. Obviously, you can still do a lot of AT damage. But what you want with these ships is to get ships pushing into you so you can get both of those sets of torps off. Two sets of... Uh, well, actually, it's a, it's two sets of four on each side. So four sets of four sending out. So eight torps, a decent reload. So um, using them quite often. And I noticed that in a lot of situations, I was using these torps all the time on cooldown. And man we really started getting a lot of damage with this ship specifically. And then obviously as you go up into the Ibuki, um, but using these, both the ship stealth, the guns, the torps, this, this line really got addicting. It really did. The ability for this ship to just pump out a ton of damage. We had maybe one of the most clutch torps ever when it came to this, because we forced repairs because of the fire, because of the high fire chance, and then getting a flood chance as well. Um, we ended up hitting some torps and just being able to go dark and just continue to do damage. What happens with a lot of ships is they have to shoot guns. They have to shoot their guns to be able to do damage. This one, you can basically just go dark at the end of the game and just be a destroyer. Worst case scenario, you you become a destroyer. And it's really, really useful, fantastic, and really love that. So let's dive into the stats for the ship. We end up getting through this pretty dang quick. And um, if we can uh, go here, we'll just divide it by tiers, not number of battles, by tiers really fast. And comparing it to our other tier eights, um, we ended up going pretty quick. So the latest tier eight we went through was the Ogdevoy. We had an 82% win rate with the Ogdevoy, crazy high, 38 games played. 54,000 damage. Obviously, it's a destroyer, so it's not going to be as much as a cruiser. But 66% win rate on the Mogami, and we got through in 38 games. So, I thought the series would go, like, battleships being one of the fastest and blah, 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 and some of the DDs and then the cruisers being the slowest. Again, proved way wrong that <laughs> the Ogdevoy, uh, the Russian line, was one of the fastest. And now we have the Mogami as being tied for the fastest. Um, almost 84,000 average damage throughout all of those. We held a 66% win rate, so cannot complain about that. Comparing 38 games to get through the ship to the Richelieu, which took 52 games. Now, obviously, the Hipper was another one um, that really can't be used. We're going through the Cleveland as well. Benson, these uh, some other ones we've been working on. So those aren't really comparable because we aren't under the same um, uh, kind of like premises and rules as those. So those are obviously going to be much faster. But comparing it to the other ships that we've done on this series, Compared to the Ogdevoy, which had a 16% higher win rate and the same amount of games, it, the Mogami caught up with that. So the Mogami, obviously, super, super strong. One of the things you're going to want to do, though, is get that 10-point captain with Concealment Expert first, and then at 14 points, pick up Inertia Fuse. Because even with the 155s, you are still going to do some decent damage. Obviously, you're going to want to aim higher on ships because with those guns, if you're going to be hitting the, the armor belt, you're not going to be able to get those uh, consistent pen damages. So you're going to be aiming for battleships in the higher superstructure area, doing damage there, lighting fires, and then, of course, rolling through your torpedoes as much as you can. Obviously, an effective range of 10 kilometers, but if something's pushing into you, you can obviously launch them beforehand. Use them and abuse them. They are such good tools, and a lot of battleships just don't expect you to be where you are because you went dark, and then you'd be sending out, uh, you know, 16 torps at their face, forcing the repair, and then just burning them down. This thing was such a fun ship to play. I forgot how fun it was, 
And again, I'll probably do a whole ship comparing the 155s to the 203s and just show you some comparisons as well. But we finished the Mogami in 38 games and then moved on to the Ibuki, a ship that everyone kind of uh, fears and hates. But for me, again, I got the buffed version of the ship. Obviously, they buffed the main battery a little bit. Again, another nasty damage farmer. Um, this is basically just like the Zhao starter Zhao kit, and it's still absolutely brutal. Uh, same kind of thing. Now with the modules, this is what we went with right here. So a lot of people are probably asking what I used on the final mod, is I used the guns, the gun range. You want to be using that 19.2 kilometer range. Zhao trajectory is fantastic, or the Zhao trajectory will kind of is. The Ibuki trajectory is fantastic, so low, fast. And again, you're going to be using your torps, your guns, everything to just start shredding ships. And it's insane. Again, very, very stealthy. Not quite as stealthy as the Mogami, but you will definitely get under, still be able to stealth torp. And really had a lot of fun. And the one of the things, though, throughout this line, and it's one of the reasons why I recommend this line for a lot of people, is going through. It's very similar from low tiers all the way to high tiers. It's a very consistent gameplay. Basically starting at tier five with the Furutaka, Alba, Miyoko, Mogami, Ibuki, and then the Zhao. You're kind of doing the same thing over and over and over and over. You're stealthy, you have torps, you have good guns, you light lots of fires, you do it over and over and over and over. Uh, I'm trying to think like there probably isn't as much of a repetitive line in this game compared to that. I think there is certain parts of lines Threat in this game that maybe the French cruisers, it's kind of the same thing over and over and over, but just tried and true effective play in these ships. And really, as an Ibuki, again, using those torps, using your guns, <laughs> using even your armor. I know people are going to laugh when I say, oh my god, lol, IJ and armor. I was angled away in a lot of situations, bounced a lot of shells. Now, obviously, if you are broadside, you can get obliterated, as can every cruiser. Um, we did take some random salvos and you're just like, come on, give me a break wargaming, but you can actually bounce some shells. We did use our armor a little bit and was pretty dang effective. And one of the things is you're so stealthy and unlike really any other line in the game, you can just go undetected reposition into a better spot and then kind of wait for them to forget about you and then randomly pop up. And especially with the Ibuki on those big 203s, you are going to be punishing them with six, seven, 8K salvos and fires. And on top of that, again, you can launch out 16 torps at them and just make them pay. Again, same kind of play style. You want them to push into you uh, as kiting away. These are some of the best kiting ships in the game up there with the French cruisers, uh, Royal Navy battleships. These things are just going to, these things just want to watch the world burn, and they are very, very effective at that. Um, the Ibuki is something that, one, a lot of people were like, oh man, you're going through this shit, that's brutal. For me, it just slayed, it really just burnt everything down. Now, throughout this entire line, I definitely noticed how classes in this game affected the game. And one of the things I meant by that is destroyers seem to have and as you saw throughout with the russian destroyer line is they had a pretty dang big impact on the game for winning um battleships also had a pretty dang big impact on the game cruisers a lot of games it the cruiser damage is slow you can't really cap caps and it's a damage over time so there was a lot of games that got out of control very quickly and I couldn't quite make up that with big hits. Now, obviously the 203s on this can absolutely slam. You can dev strike cruisers if you get them correctly, and you can do a lot of damage, but most of the time your damage is going to be slow, dot style damage, damage over time, and it's gonna take you time to make damage happen. So one of the things that a lot of, especially high tier gameplay right now and high tier player base right now, is sometimes they don't really give you time and teams can absolutely fold. So there was definitely, especially when you get into the high tier games because of how much of a snowball those kind of games can be, you did kind of feel a little helpless. You just said, fine, I'll try to just get as much, uh, you know, as, as much damage in as I can. At least with the destroyer, I could cap caps and slow it down, you know, help with spotting, help with killing DDs, battleships. Obviously I can take out radar ships. I can put damage on destroyers. I can do all this, I can do all that. Felt like it had a better impact on the game for actually winning but overall with cruisers you tend to just be farming damage maybe you're more of a deterrence than you are kind of an aggressive ship like the other destroyers but you there was plenty of games where i just kind of lost map control and the games just got out of hand and i had i seemed like i i, I felt like i had no 
input on the game. This is nothing I could have done. But the actual Ibuki itself at tier 9, again, 63% win rate. Very, very solid. Udaloy at 65. And the Ibuki, 65%, 52 games for the Udaloy. The, the Russian tier 9 went down. And then the Ibuki, 63%, 52 games. Now, again, probably would have taken us one or two extra games because we had the clan battle boost as well as the premium time boost. So maybe would have taken us a little bit, like maybe a couple more um, games, nothing too crazy, but we did. One of the things is we did reach that 100K average, which is absolutely nuts. Uh, are we there with the rune? We're there with the rune as well, but 100K average, we farmed so much damage in the ship and really just absolutely causing havoc on this. But overall, 63% win rate as a solo queuing tier nine cruiser, I think is fantastic. And um, really been able to do a lot of that. Don't look at my Fletcher. I've only played one game in it. And um, really high XP, you know, comparing it to the Alsace. And uh, again, Alsace 63%. Um, 64 games played though. So it took us much higher. Again, averaging over 100K, which is awesome. And <laughs> then we got into our Zal. We had some rough Zal games so far. But uh, the Ibuki, a fantastic cruiser. I think um, this is a ship that brings a lot of, uh, a lot of horrors back to people who played it. And um, people really didn't like playing this ship if you just go back and use the strengths of the ship i think what people do a lot with uh, ijan cruisers is try to make them play like they aren't effectively played so they try to kind of square peg round hole this ship into something that's not and then they are they just get obliterated you get the the fragile flat side cruiser that can get destroyed so when you when you work into the ship and use its strengths of getting ships to push into you holding down a flank and really having a good time um, just farming tons of damage. These ships can be super, super effective. But as you see, we worked on to the Zao and we had maybe one of the coolest endings ever to a Zao game. And if you've ever played the Zao, you know the Zao is amazing. The Zao is a goddess. It's, it's awesome. This ship is so damn good. If you haven't gone down this line, it's so awesome. Um, if you want to know what captain we're using right now, what captain setup, this is still pretty basic. So we got to a tier 10 captain with only a 15 point captain. I think this is actually the lowest one um, XP wise that we got through, uh, but still super solid. We're actually using a pretty try hard radio location build. I think this is fantastic because we can drop the inertia fuse once you get into tier nine and we picked up radio location. One of the, uh, one of the most important skill points you can actually get with this ship. And honestly, once you get to the Miyoko, uh, maybe Alba even, um, getting expert loader is super important, super important because your AP is so good that drop on the reload time for 50 seconds is fantastic. So this is even a good 11 point captain skill. If you want to pick it up again, uh, we're picked up a location. We might pick up AFT or something like that with a little bit of AA, but we tend to shred, uh, planes a decent amount. So I'm not quite sure what else. Maybe we'd go demo expert. I'm not sure what the rest of the points, but we'll get there eventually, but only at 15 points. And I feel like I have all the tools in the world to really farm a lot of damage. And of course the Zao, awesome. Big two oh threes. I feel at home in this ship. Uh, once you get those 12 kilometer torps too, they are just another beast in themselves. Um, 12 kilometers, you can stealth torp so much. It's crazy and uh, really put a lot of pressure. Actually catch a lot of DDs, those 12 kilometer torps, put a lot of pressure um, on destroyers, put a lot of pressure on battleships, having them push around. And this is like the perfect cruiser. I love this, played this so much in rank battles, played it so much in clan battles, played it so much in, in tier tens. This is one of the things I'm really excited. One of the legendary modules, or the legendary module for the Zhao is one of the best in my opinion. So if you haven't gotten it, be sure to go and get that or work on that because it's definitely worth it. You drop a little bit of range for maneuverability and um, some reload. It's so worth it. Really, really, really is. Um, so looking forward to getting through this line. But this line altogether was a blast. Um, again, this is the part that I love about this series is get going down a line I haven't played in a long time and playing some ships I haven't played in forever. And one of the things that... that really kind of surprised me was how good the Ibuki was the Ibuki at tier nine you get you hear these horror stories of people just going man I couldn't stand it had to free XP through it uh, man that thing's so fragile it's a piece of trash blah 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 well since they buffed it too um it's just it's a starter Zao it's a little baby Zao it's fantastic and and especially with the Mogami I forgot how damn good those 155s were with and without inertia fuse their ability to pump out damage and using those torps and using those tools 
this line is definitely worth going down or even revisiting if you haven't played it in a long time. Um, again, I still recommend this ship because it really, these kind of cruisers really teach how cruisers should be played. And what I mean by that is making cruisers extend games and kind of dealing that damage over time and running away, learning to use your stealth as a cruiser, disengaging using both guns and torps effectively. It's a really good training cruiser line and I recommend it, especially if you are newer to the game, checking out this line. But really um, enjoying this, really enjoying this, obviously this Road to 210 series. I love it. It's been a, very addicting to me and it's cool to see how this line really kind of, kind of remembered how, reminded me how good just this line was. I don't know. It's been, it's been a long time since I've, I've visited the IGN cruisers as a whole. So it's very cool to kind of go back and really have a lot of fun, but we are done. We are done. So that means the next line, I will let you guys pick. I'm thinking either we go down, probably go down a battleship line. So I'm interested in what you guys think, but the ones we have left are IGN battleships, IGN destroyers, both torp and gun. Either one of those I'd be fantastic with. Um, USN, we have to wait till I make another account to do all of these. We'll do that at some point. We do have the Russian cruisers we could still do or finish up the Russian Cabaline, um, German battleships and destroyers we could go down. Obviously, we have the Hindenburg. We finished up that kind of as a side project. We have the Royal Navy battleship, which would be kind of interesting. Royal Navy cruisers, which I think would be one of the fastest lines I'd go down. French battleship, or French battleships we finished. French cruisers, we could go down as well. And then we've already finished up the rest of the stuff. So I, I think maybe on the next one, we may pick up another battleship line. So the battleships would either be German, uh, would be the UK, which I think would be interesting. UK, German battleships, uh, or the IJN battleships. I think those are probably the top three I'm looking at next, but I will let that be up to you. Which line do you think we should go down? Again, pretty much everything except all the USN lines, all the CV lines, and we have the Zhao, Hindenburg, uh, Yu Yang, Grozovoy, and the Republic. So basically outside of those, it's fair game. So whatever you guys think, put in the comments below and also let me uh, know what you guys uh, think of the IJN line, both the Mogami, the Ibuki, and of course, the goddess, the Zhao, uh, the kind of the icing on the cake, the, you know, cherry on top. The thing is just so amazing. I can't wait to get the legendary module, but anyways, I can finally sell those because I'm broke again and we finally made the video. So I always hold on to the other ships before we can do it. So I can sell the Mogami and the Ibuki and get some cash because I'm broke when on this account only at seven, six and a half million. So anyways, guys, uh, finishing this chapter of our road to tier 10 series. And just a reminder, the series or the chapters we have going forward are going to have a bit of a faster progression because we are going to just stick with the premium, um, the boosted premium, as well as the clan battle bonus. So they will be a tad faster going forward. So I'll try to maybe do a comparison throughout this entire series. It's just much easier for me than having to switch back and forth. And it's kind of a headache, but um, I think it's just easier to just do this instead of obviously starting the project all over again. So anyways, that's it for the IGN Cruisers. I'll let you guys pick the next line. Let me know in the comments below. I'm going to probably start it this week too, or this coming week. So, um, but I'm interested in what you guys want to see next. But that's it for IGN Cruisers. Check that done. We got done with the Zell. We can sell those ships, get some credits back, and we're looking forward to the next chapter. Anyways, guys, that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.